Thanks for doing this. Madame and Monsieur, ladies and gents, welcome to another uh, Time Well Wasted vlog uh, about me and my talented friends. Tonight, a very special guest, not only a very special guest, the first female guest. So I've done 10 people so far. She is number 11, and I'm sorry it took so long to do uh, a female, but I don't, other than you and my friend Courtney, I don't really know many girl musicians. Anyways, so, uh, ladies and gents, Alison, how are you? Doing great, bye. <laughs> in Waterloo, Ontario, in my living room, um, she's used to big fancy studios, uh, so she's now in my living room in Waterloo, so thank you. So, we'll be asking you some questions. When and why did you start playing, and what did you start playing? When I was three years old, uh, my, I was the last of five kids, and uh, my mom got me to watch a ballet on TV, and I was not at all interested in the dancing. I was like, what is making that high-pitched sound? Like, that's what I want to do. Yeah. And because I was the last of five kids, my parents were like, yeah, sure, sure, you want to play the violin, you know. And so six years went by, and I was nine, and we stopped at a friend's house, and I picked up a fiddle that they had in the corner, because it's Newfoundland and a lot of people have fiddles around. Yeah. And uh, I picked it up. I started playing. And the guy who owned it, he was like a family friend. He was like, well, where did she learn how to play? And my parents were like, well, she doesn't know how to play. And he was like, well, obviously she can do it. <laughs> so, you yeah. know, so then from then on, I had lessons. And then I, yeah, just basically started when I was nine years old. So you've been playing for five years now? That's you're, right. You're 16, 17. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Going in my uh, seventh year. Yeah, of playing the violin. Right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Times. <laughs> Anyways, no comment. Here's uh, So what I want to do is I ask music question, then random facts of life question that I All want right. to ponder about. Okay. Why doesn't McDonald's sell hot dogs? Oh, well, I think that um, ironically, I feel like a hot dog is associated with cheapness. And although McDonald's is very cheap fast food, mm -hmm. I think they want to give the allure that they are a classier Right. place than they are so the hot dog would cheapen the brand a very uh vulcan star trek logic like <laughs> answer good job Thank good you. job <laughs> i inserted my computer chip before i i came tonight i remembered it <laughs> hey uh another question for you when you go to a movie theater which armrest is yours the left one or the right one they're both mine <laughs> oh you're greedy <laughs> oh no <laughs> because you could you either take the back or the front and then someone can kind of like use the front if you're using the back no yeah you no. can share it it's a partage you can share it and uh <laughs> actually the first female guest on my vlog and also actually low mark was french too so the second french speaking person here okay so would you like to say uh, hello to your folks and your mother tongue well, my mother tongue is English. English? Okay, never mind. <laughs> or, to your or to your French speaking. Sure. Mes amis qui parlent français et ma famille qui parle français, le bonjour. <laughs> there I go. Uh, do they have the word dictionary in the dictionary, you think? I know it's a mine. It's, it's, it's that's a, a tough one. I think they do. Okay. I think they do. I actually don't know the answer. I asked all these questions because I don't know. But did you know they took the word gullible out of the dictionary? No, why? No, they didn't. But you believe me. Oh, <laughs> stop! Good for you. Uh, do vegetarian eat animal crackers? Animal crackers in my soup? Only in their soup. There you go. <laughs> okay. I got nothing. I got nothing. It's been a long day. Actually, okay. we both had long days. Uh, what was the first tune you learned on the fiddle or uh, guitar or whatever mm. that you wanted to learn? You heard the song and go, I'm going to play this song okay. myself. Well, before I learned to play the violin, we did have like an old guitar kicking around the house. Yeah. And I would block off the end of the hallway and I would charge people money to get into oh, the living room that's cute. by singing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Uh, oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> 
so that was a song I really liked. I also loved You Are My Sunshine, so I'd sing that one because um, my dad always sang that with us. And But the first song I wanted to perform for my recital, my very first recital ever, yeah. was Imagine by John Lennon. Oh, yeah. great song, great song. In your own bold opinion, mm -hmm. is there a time limit on a fortune cookie prediction? You know, we go... Mm. You think there's an expiry date on these messages? Sure. I think that the... Well, first of all, I have a superstition about the fortune cookie. So, number one, you I just blew your mind right yeah. now, didn't I? Yes. Yeah, well, I thought about this. <laughs> but, but it's like all... It's tied in. Okay. So, number one is you have to eat your full meal. And then you have to eat the cookie first before you read the fortune. You know that, uh, right? Uh, Otherwise, no. it doesn't apply to you. I did not know You're that. You're not allowed to see the fortune until you eat the cookie. Because it's like... I would say most people don't do that, but... Okay. I don't know why well, I do that, but I have to eat the cookie first and then I read I even, the thing. I didn't even check my hair before oh, yeah. I started this. Fine. You're doing good. Good, thank yeah. you. Thank you. I mean, yeah, it's good. Um, but then the fortune cookie will last until it happens. So there's no expiry date on it. Okay. It just lasts until... And, and, you know, they remain to be true. Or until you get a new fortune cookie. I like how... How assertive you are, but that, that's brilliant. Uh, next question. Is your family musical? Do they play instruments? From Newfoundland, I'm sure people played cards and played music. or. Yeah, so I grew up in a music collector family. So my dad had a big Beatles collection growing up, like a Beatles room in our house. Nice. So I grew up like with a lot of listening. We had like massive speakers and a huge like stereo system. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, and, like, a lot of great records, so, not so much playing, and not so much traditional Newfoundland music, which makes me feel like a bad Newfoundlander sometimes, but a lot of rock music, and blues, so, I was kind of raised on that. Such as blues, what, like, Muddy Waters, yeah. or? Yeah, Howlin' Wolf, Muddy Waters, Sunhouse, um, Neil Young, the band, uh, Beatles, obviously. Um, Bob Dylan, huge, huge, huge Bob Dylan household. And there's a band now called uh, The War on Drugs, and that guy, that singer, is a mixture of Dylan, yeah, and other people. I'll have to play it for you later. Yeah, actually, I can roll a quick clip here for five seconds. Anyways, I'll play it for you later because it's it's cool. uncanny. Like it's okay. very cool. Uh, if uh, next question, okay. <laughs> if vampires cannot see the reflection in a mirror, how is their goddamn hair always so neatly, perfectly placed? Hmm. If they can't see their hair in the mirror, because they can't see themselves in the mirror, hmm. how's their hair so perfect? Does their hair ever move out of place, or once you're a vampire, does it like just come like Lego hair? You know. <laughs> Lego hair. <laughs> Lego hair. I yeah. like that. It's a possible solution <laughs> to that question. I've heard a number of responses. Like most people say, well, that minions they do it for the uh, they mm -hmm. hypnotize people to do it for them. Mm. I heard that before. Mm -hmm. But yours, like Lego hair, is good. High five. <laughs> okay, this is fun. Uh, since bread is square, why is sandwich meat round? I know there's some meat that are square, but I would mm -hmm. say most meat comes in a tube, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, I feel like this is the same issue that the hot dog companies have because the wieners and the buns don't match up, right? Like, they're, they're always more buns than wieners in the packs. Correct. Yeah. So... I feel like this is just an example of like industries not communicating. No you kidding. Know? No and kidding. Uh, you get what? Tall hot dogs by eight buns? Yeah. Or it's or the opposite. I don't. Oh, maybe it's you're right. Yeah, there's more wieners than buns. Or is it like six hot dogs, eight buns? I don't know. Ooh. Depends, I guess, on what pack you buy. But they're, they're never the same amount. So. Correct. Yeah. I don't know. Uh,. I think it's just lack of communication between industries. 
Brilliant. It's like I'm talking to a Vulcan here from Star Trek. Amazing. Which famous musician do you admire and why and who? Mm. Oh, now you hit me with the hard questions. Oh, I got to ramp it up a little, you know? <laughs> uh, wow. Famous musician? Someone that everyone would know? It do, no, it doesn't have to be, I mean, famous. Because most people that will be watching this, the 100 or 200 people or... Hundred million people that watch this one day, maybe okay. we never know. Who are, who's influencing you right now, as an okay. influence? I mean, obviously, like role model influence, like Dolly Parton. You know, I feel like her career has just been like impeccable yeah. and amazing, and all of the music she releases is fantastic. And her as a person, she's just incredible. Uh, so, like Dolly Parton and like Willie Nelson. Mm -hmm. Those kinds of people. But then musically, who's influencing me? Like Warren Ellis, who's like Nick Cave's violinist. Um, There's a famous country western singer from, I want to see Newfoundland. or Her name is Edith Butler. Edith Butler. Edith Butler? Maybe. And I remember as a kid watching the violin player, I think, whoa, that guy is good. Like, he was so feeling it. Like, it's, anyways. Yeah. I should not interrupt you. No. Please finish your. Uh, That's cool. I'm going to have to look that up. Edith Butler, country western singer. She's old. Like, she's probably the same age as uh, maybe a slightly younger than Dolly Parton. But. Mm -hmm. Dolly's making a comeback. I, she never really oh, yeah. went away. Like, she's making a rock album now. Yeah. <laughs> uh,. Yeah, so I, I mean, like, I definitely look up to, like, other violinists who have been doing, you know, similar yeah. kinds of outside-the-box fiddling. Um, thank you. Oh. But uh, I also really admire people who work super hard on their career and just, like, indie musicians. So, like, Jeffrey Lewis comes to mind. He uh, lives in New York. Um, yeah, Phoebe Kreutz, also in New York. Of course, Phoebe from New York. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. So again, yeah, not like super, uh, you know, household celebrity names, but pretty like. Doesn't you know, mean they're not as good, if not more talented than the commercial stuff we hear. So yeah, exactly. It's just, they're just lacking the exposure. Yeah, and in a way, I think I kind of do admire that lack of exposure in a, in a really well, weird way they have freedom they don't have yeah. a label tell them how many songs to record what order to put them in blah blah blah, blah. for sure and uh i think a lot of the musicians that i gravitate toward and that i really like enjoy listening to are people who do all the things themselves which makes me then also a musician who does all the things herself and it's exhausting but it's really also kind of fun so and I'm constantly learning. So, but I know you do play other instruments other than your fiddle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, 2022. This is the first year that I released. Okay, not not true. First year that I officially released any music of my own, any of my own songwriting. Yeah. But there is a person in Newfoundland. Uh, his name is Elling Lean, and uh, he started the record per month challenge in Newfoundland. So it was associated with record per month challenge that started uh, in New Hampshire, but he ended up taking it to Newfoundland and now Newfoundland is the official headquarters for like the world cool. because so many musicians made albums like it's hundreds and hundreds of albums that get made in February in Newfoundland every single year. So like the first year he ran it, I think it was 2008, maybe 2007. And I played on like six different albums and I wrote my own and nice. the parameters is like 10 songs or 30 minutes. Of music, so. Do they have a website we can plug? To yeah, direct people RPMNL. To? There I go. Look at that. Show the cameras. Yeah, RPM, hashtag RPMNL. <laughs> so let's get more people on, on the... And anyone from anywhere can participate. Uh, so I actually started a noise collective here in Waterloo, and we released an album um, in 2018 or 19. 19. Uh, I think I played drums on there for exactly. a couple hours. Mm-hmm. Until I could not see the drums. 
Because your glasses got blurry. Correct. Did I say that? Ah, yeah. <laughs> good memory. This question will blow your mind. Okay. And that's a great answer, and I'm glad you, I'm glad you got to plug in that site too. So good job. Uh, can you cry on the water? Do you think it's physically possible to cry on the water? I think you can cry under water. Really? I think I've done it before. <laughs> no. <laughs> like as a kid, as a grown up. Oh, I'm like a huge crier. I can cry all the time. <laughs> no. Yeah, like huge. I'm pretty sure I've cried underwater. Because you can feel it coming out. But like, it's just not, it's mixing with all the other water. But is there pressure if you, I mean, if you're underwater, there's clearly pressure against your eyes and your tear duct. But you can still cry underwater. Okay. Is that, you're so I, assertive. Like, honestly, I honestly feel like you. I've done I this. totally believe you. <laughs> You're actually the first person <laughs> ever to admit to this. This is a cute one. Okay. Who was your first teacher that you remember or teachers that made an impact in your life? And that's funny because she is a teacher. Right. So. Okay, my kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Higgins. Super fantastic. Is she still kicking? No, I no. don't think so. I think no. she passed. Miss Reed Petal in grade two was my absolute favorite because I was a spelling bee champ. And she recognized that in grade two. So she would give the whole class like spelling words like frog. But then I would get like amphibian because she gave me a whole separate <laughs> list. Like they would get like turkey. I would get like cornucopia. But like she challenged me and it, she gave the other students the opportunity to do both lists. Yeah. Right. So it's not like she singled me out, but I was the only student who chose to do the second list ever. Mm. So it was, you know, I would do both spelling lists, but I loved spelling so much. So I really, really enjoyed that she did that. And so I try to recognize that kind of thing in my students nowadays, too. That's uh, neat. Yeah. And then my grade six teacher, Mr. Gillard, just super casual and very fun. And uh, he had a journal where we would write back and forth to him. Oh, yeah. And he loved Bob Dylan. And I went to see my first Bob Dylan concert when I was in grade six. So I wrote to him all about it. And like he was asking what like Bob Dylan was wearing during the concert. And sure. like I would write back and I still have those journals somewhere. Yeah. It made a huge impact on me. That's a great idea. Do you, did you ever catch yourself thinking of maybe do, doing the same thing with your students? I did the that. Older ones? Yeah. Yeah. So when I taught high school in Nunavut um, and like junior high, like grades seven to 12. Hold on. Back at the sure. bus here. Yeah. You did what in none of it? Uh, so I taught for none of it. I taught in none of it uh, for a few years. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Wow, I did yeah. not know that about you. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. What are your fondest musical memories? Uh, whether it's a concert, Dylan, or okay. as far as even you simply playing with somebody you look up to or your dad or your mom or sibling or whatever yeah um being on stage at the vancouver folk fest with joel plaskett because i feel because we were like all i was touring with a band called the burning hell and we were all on the same stage and i was in my early 20s at that time but like 16 year old me inside was like oh my god <laughs> you know so that was kind of a nice like just moment uh Playing, oh, there's so many, there are so many good musical moments. There was a bluegrass night that used to happen at a bar called CBTG's in Newfoundland. So like every Wednesday night, we would be there from 10 p.m. till 4 a.m. playing the whole night. And so those that those are some like cherished memories, like of just like the best musicians coming through and playing and bluegrass folks are great people yeah and we just would play all night like it was just so fun i've been to a festival years and years ago with an old friend of mine it was at a scrapyard in ontario somewhere it yeah. was about an hour away from cambridge i don't recall where it was but the nicest people and people could sing like four parts harmonies perfect like on the dot like yeah so these people did not, you know, attend fancy school for music. They just, it's in them. Like, they get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bluegrass and uh, Dixie music. Uh, uh, barbershop singing, I love to. Mm -hmm. Do you know Steve, Steve Parkinson? Yeah, yeah. So his dad is, or was, very heavily in, into barbershop music. Oh. They're oh. at a campground in Ontario that's only for 
barbershop people. And apparently, wow. every night is a big jam of barbershop people. That's actually Singing really tags awesome. and stuff. I've been begging Steve Parkinson. If you're watching, Steve, hi. <laughs> Please bring me there this summer. It's I begged you for like I don't know five or six years in a row now. Anyways, I digress. <laughs> it's about you, not about me. Well, I mean, I want to go now too. So if well, there you go, Steve. <laughs> Steve's bringing you. I may as well go along. She can sing and play. <laughs> I can just film and be French or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I totally forgot about that discussion. What? Were you influenced by old records, tapes, CD, or digital media? Was my first listening? Well, wh- which one do you prefer? Like, uh, oh, uh, hmm. I don't prefer any of it. Whoa! I will tell you, I love seeing music live so much. That's that so re- such a refreshing answer. I know, but it like it almost hurts to listen to music, which is like weird because I'm a musician and I'm, I obviously love also listening to music, but. The experience of going to see music live is so exciting to me, and it's the best way to hear the band that, like, any recordings, I feel like, kind of fade in comparison, no matter what media it's on. So, but if I had to choose, obviously, like, sitting around and listening to a record with friends is great. Um, probably just digital media for my own personal consumption. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And CDs. I've recently I recently purchased a CD player again, so. I've had this little girl. Her name is Katana, Miss K. Actually, the same girl that made me this shirt with my personal S. Nice. Uh, she uh, we went to Quebec City this summer, and she uh, looked in the back of my seat at a pouch of CDs. She's like, what is this? I'm like, these are CDs. Oh, like a vinyl? I'm like, no, no, they're CDs. She's like, who has CDs? I'm like, me, I guess. <laughs> I mean, my car can do MP3s and all that stuff. With memory keys, but yeah. yeah. CD is still a thing. So, well, maybe not according to her. Anyways. Well, if anyone out there is interested in 400 of my CDs, <laughs> please get in touch. <laughs> there you go. Look at the camera. Say that again. Uh, my EP, What's In It For You?, uh, which was <laughs> very kindly manufactured by Encore Records here in uh, Kitchener-Waterloo. Really? Cool. Yeah. Um, I still have around 400 left, so mm. if anyone's interested, you can check out my band camp or Encore Records. It's for sale there locally. They're still open? I thought they, I yeah. was, I thought they were yeah. closed. No, they're still going strong. Oh, man, I need to go there then because yeah. my record collection is suffering. Yep. Oh, this is a good one. Okay. How do you handle mistakes during a performance? This is such a great question. I love do, it. Like, do you do you tell yourself don't make a face? Don't what? How do you deal with this? What is your thought process? So, in the context of playing by myself, I just keep going, whatever. Yeah. And in the context of playing with other people I do the same (laughs) I just keep going and I expect them to follow me if I'm leading yeah and if I'm following someone else and I've messed up that I just adjust and shift and we just get back on track it's like if you stop it's like the audience most of the time does not know that anything is going on correct oh 100 percent because like they just don't know what it's supposed no one knows what it's supposed to sound like you know well, some people do. If you but stop, it's obvious. But if yes. you don't stop and fake it. Yeah. And if you make like an angry look at somebody on stage, if they make a mistake or whatever, it's like, that's just bad vibes. And like, just like, ev- no one's trying to make a mistake. You know? Everyone's just trying to do their best. But mistakes happen. Like, we're all human. So, you know, it's not like I'm going to be like, oh, I've never made a mistake. It's a great local, <laughs> not local artist, because I think it's from Burlington or Oakville or Toronto. Yeah. His name is Matty Leon. It's like folk rockish. Okay. Great band. So, folks, Matty Leon, check them out. Is that last song I've heard, last new song I heard, uh, one of his lines is like, fake it to make it. It's kind of true. And, and you're right. People in the audience, they don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, I watched. Sloan play and slaughter their own songs this summer. 
Like, yeah. I'm talking about like 10, 15 mistakes a song. Mm-hmm. Because they're not played. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, guys, if you're watching this. Eric, sorry. Uh, well, everyone's out of practice playing with each other because of the pandemic. Like, uh, no one could rehearse with each other and no one could get on stage. So, yeah. just that. I read this um, article about how, like, athletes, too, like, it set us all back, you know, like, athletes that were at their peak performance at the start of the pandemic. Well, yeah. now they have to, like, retrain and get back to where they were. Yeah. Yeah, so it's the same for musicians. Do you still get nervous before you play, or you just go with, you're a pretty chill person, so I don't... I don't think I've gotten nervous since my first violin recital. Good for you. Yeah. My Baba. first violin recital, my knees were shaking the entire time. I could feel, I thought they were going to give out and I was playing and my knees were just shaking, but I still made it through the whole song and everything. But, uh, yeah, I don't think I get nervous anymore so much. Good for you. Yeah. Oh, this one's a good one too. Okay. Brace yourself. All right. Dirty. Good job. Good job. Why don't you ever see baby pigeons? I actually got the answer last night for real from my friend. Now, I will tell you, I used to live in Fort Townsend, which is like a footpath off of Signal Hill in St. John's. Actually, Maddie Leon has a song about Signal Hill, too. Okay. Hi, Maddie. <laughs> And where, oh, I guess that's the seagulls, not pigeons. Yeah, yeah. that's seagulls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wrong pigeons. Bird. I don't really know much about pigeons. Uh, they both poo everywhere. That's yeah. All I know. Okay, I would say you don't see baby pigeons. I'd say you do, but they're the same size as the adults. So the answer I got yesterday was... Uh, from my friend Freya, life coach Freya. Hi, Freya. Uh, she knows this because some lived on her penthouse place in Hamilton. Okay. And uh, they stay in the burn nest until they're fully grown, and then they leave. Right. They don't leave as a baby, so they cater until they're mm -hmm. adult. I guess they must grow very fast, too. But Yeah. There you go. Now we know. You you are now officially educated. Nice. What would you? Uh, what advice would you give to beginners that are nervous or about or about to play start playing their own shows? Like, right. Any advice? Uh, Don't stop playing, and then. Well, I think the first bit of advice is that you can't measure your success against anybody else's and you have to decide what is your personal best and figure out if you're reaching your personal best like did i do my best tonight not like i'm frustrated because i can't play yeah. carnegie hall yet yeah you know so it's like you know, reach your audience connect with somebody like find something positive and keep growing the positive thing whatever that thing is for me, it's when I write songs and then people come to me and they're like, oh, like you put everything I'm thinking into words. Right. Like, thank you for doing that, right. you know, and just uh, and I can't stop writing songs because it's how I process everything. Right. So it's like writing poetry or whatever. Yeah. It's it's a medium that or, that I use. So I, I'm always going to keep writing them for myself. So that's what I've been cultivating for myself yeah. is that I write these songs. I would like to share them with other people. Am I doing that? Box checked. Excellent. I really don't need anything more than that. <laughs> like, that is, that's my baseline. I'm doing a good job. Cool. Yeah. And again, it's, it's, nice, how to, it's nice how to deal with a record label that tries to direct you in a direction that they think would, they would get the money Although back you from know, you. Like it's, I'd like the option to have a record label. That would be fine. <laughs> There are some really good record labels like that don't they'll yeah. not sway you and let you be mm -hmm. creative. Mm -hmm. uh, like Dine and Own Record, which is fairly new in Toronto, which is Dallas Green record label. Mm. He's been in music biz for a long time too, so he knows. Let people 
create. Don't try to, mm-hmm. you know, don't try to direct them. Yeah. Yeah, there are some great labels out there, especially, yeah, Canadian. Two last questions for you. Okay. Tell us your last great revelation. It can be about life. It can be about music. It can be about relationship. It can be about anything. Hmm. My last great revelation. Take your time. I can edit this. Okay. Yeah, I got to take a moment on this one because I feel like there have been a few recently. <laughs> Good. Well, then share, share a few then. Okay. Uh, so when I was in high school, I read a lot of literature. Um, actually, I can't remember what book this is from, but my parents let me paint my quotes all on my wall. That's so cool. I know. It was great. So I would wake up every day surrounded by like all of my favorite quotes, like Marcus Aurelius, like, you know, the intellect of each of us is a god. You know, or Dostoevsky, like, um, you've forgotten more over the, oh no, what is it? Um, in 10 seconds, an eternity happens, but also, I don't know, actually, this is terrible. Can we edit this? <laughs> Just scrap Maybe. all of that. No, <laughs> that's good. That's the good stuff. Uh, yeah, I can't remember all the quotes exactly, but there was this one that was going down the wrong, going partway down the wrong path is not the same as going the wrong direction. Makes sense. Yeah. So I feel like in my life, my approach and my attitude has been like, if you try something and it's not working out, don't be afraid to recognize it's not working out and change your path. Yeah. Because going partway down the wrong path doesn't mean you've committed to fully being on that wrong path forever. Right, right, right. You can take a different path, you know? Take another road. Yeah. And I mean, that's obviously like a privileged uh, viewpoint that I have where I feel like I have enough resources that if I do something, I could safely make a different decision. Yeah. You know, it's coming from a place of privilege. But that quote has led my life to lots of great directions. I was supposed to move to Toronto to do my master's degree. And in the airport, I met Charlie Pride's band. And so instead of going to Toronto, I went to Texas and took fiddle lessons with Charlie Pride's fiddle player and then spent all the money that I'd saved to move to Toronto (laughs) that summer going to New York and Texas, visiting my friends and hanging out. And I took a Greyhound from New York to, um, sorry, yeah, to New York to Dallas. And yeah, that was a learning experience. So how many friends do you have in New York City? Because it feels like, you know, quite a few people from New York City. Yeah, I mean... Feel free to drop names in case they watch. Right. I would say um, my best friend in New York is Michael Winograd, who's a klezmer clarinetist. And through Michael, I feel like I have like a network of kind of friends in New York that or acquaintances that I could drop by and see. And That's awesome. Yeah. So basically friends of his. um, Yeah. And then uh, Jim Flynn is another musician... In New York that uh, I did some recording with him and Spencer Chiquitas, who's another guitar player who sometimes lives in New York. Um, yeah. And my friend Ruckel uh, Kafferson, she uh, writes for um, some Jewish publications and she studies kind of cryptozoology. Cool. Yeah. Intersecting with Judaism. So very. That's deep. Very cool. Very- that, okay, cool that could be an pri- entire podcast. Oh, guaranteed. Yeah. Easily. Mm-hmm. We should re- revisit that idea. All right. One last question for you. Mm-hmm. What came first? The chicken or the egg? Well, do either of them really exist? If you're in the Matrix, maybe not, but... <laughs> And in what do tonight I actually on think? A, uh, today's Wednesday? I think the egg had to be created first. Okay. Somehow there was an egg formed and then that turned into a chicken and then the chicken continued it. I love how you conf- 
convincing you are. Like, yeah. if, if I was a bit younger and less jaded, I'd be like, she's right. She knows. Excellent. That's my job. I'm a teacher. Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so that's what you guys do. Yeah. You fake it till you make it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, I totally forgot to say this in the introduction. Sorry about that. Uh, you and I met at um, one of my dear, dear friend, Caroline and Justin's grand store opening, uh, which is called uh, Spool and Spindle, which is a fabric and yarn and such store. At a uh, grand opening of the store, and you were playing for this, uh, I don't I'm not sure what, what can I call onion honey or mustard plug? Like what's? They're, uh, I guess, a string band. It's like folkish, or yeah. mm-hmm. and uh, people that read know me very well. I cry all the time, whether I'm in public or whatever. I'm a crier. And the song, the pine. Oh yeah. The way Esther sings that song with Dave. Mm-hmm me sorry for the swear word yeah i could probably edit that but it's brilliant fucking song and nirvana killed that like they mm-hmm. butchered that song like, i didn't even know i didn't even realize it was the same song oh i love nirvana's version too though. oh no 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 yeah i'm gonna stick with hester and dave for that okay. one yeah I, l- I love all the versions of that song pretty much because the lyrics are just so good yeah it's kind of like the birthday song. Nobody really knows. It's an old folk song. Nobody owns a copyright to it. Mm-hmm. And they don't know where it came from. Mm-hmm. I'm sure people tried to. Actually, somebody did try to copyright the happy birthday song. Yeah, I think I remember that. Mm-hmm. Years ago. Marga. Sue. Someone did copyright the smiley face, right? I don't know. I think so. I think that's copyrighted. Mm-hmm. All right, folks. Well, there we have it. Uh... Any famous last word you'd like to part? Plug in your sites, plug in your anything you'd like to sell yeah. or talk about. Well, about first yourself. of all, thanks for uh, hanging out and hey, no, asking me my opinion on uh, various sandwich meats. <laughs> <laughs> right? right? Yeah. My, I had a professor once who, who got asked questions about the blue moon and then he became the blue moon expert. Really? Uh, just because he had answered, you know, one interview about it. That's so hilarious. Maybe I'll get to be an expert on something uh, coming. There's out of another this really good f- refreshing answer. So th- you're bringing so much new blood to this mm-hmm. right now. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. And if anybody wants to find me, I'm uh, at AllieCorbett.com. www.AllieCorbett.com. But to make sure, because people is A L L Y C O R B E T T dot com. And on Instagram, at Violin Allison. With Violin one Allison. L. Yeah, Allison with one L. I know I'm supposed to do other people. Like, my friend's sister, uh, which you know, I guess, Wendy. Yeah. I like to do that. Uh, I'd like to put her in that chair one day. Yep. And my friend, Mike Ladano, sister, is a wicked... It's not clarinet. It's some weird, obscure... Mm. Catherine Ladano is her name. And her instrument is, I cannot think, my mind is poop right now, but I can actually add two more female to this vlog thing, Time Well Wasted Podcast Vlog. That would be uh, super great. And one day, maybe maybe I'll do them, then do one reunion of all the girls together. That'd be fun. I'll have to set up more, more mics, but yeah. we could call it the estrogen vlog. Yes, the <laughs> estrogen vlog. <laughs> take over yes all yeah. right thanks for watching folks if you're still watching god bless your heart uh sorry about the name change of the youtube channel it was seven online but now it's nalaska nalaska tala which means in the box in italian long story but uh, i'll probably make a vlog about that how, why and how i changed that name anyways thanks for watching folks god bless